John chapter number 2. You cannot cry against poverty without the help of a prophet. Because the Bible says that believe in the Lord, so shall you be established. And believe in the prophet, so shall you prosper. Every time the lake was about to be removed in the land, a prophet would always appear. You look at Israel, the Bible says that they were under a siege. And the prophet had to, be, to appear and say, by this time tomorrow. You look at the Shunammite woman, she legged a child. A prophet had to appear and tell you that you are going to have a child. You look at Abraham, Genesis chapter number 18. The Bible says there were three men that appeared. So every time that God is about to remove lake and want, he always sends a voice. He is man or his woman of God. John chapter number 2. John chapter number 2. The Bible says, on the third day, there was a wedding at Cana, and the mother of Jesus was there. The following verse. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited, which means they appeared in the place. Verse number three. Verse three. And when they ran out of wine, lake, when they ran out of clients, when they ran out of money, the Bible says the mother of Jesus said to him, to Jesus, they have no more wine. The following verse. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour is not yet come. The following verse. The Bible says, his mother said to the servants, which is you and me, whatever he says to you, do it. Which means you do not benefit from the instruction that you hear. You benefit from the instruction that you do. We want to pray. Lord, help me to do. You have helped me to hear. I've been hearing and hearing and hearing. By hearing, I gain faith. But by doing, I gain works. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Which means a man who is only hearing and not doing is dead in marriage, is dead in business. So we want to pray and say, Lord, help us to do whatever he tells you to do. The Bible says do it. Which means Mary knew that Jesus would tell them to do some crazy things. Some things that will look abnormal. Some things that will look absurd. Some things that will look like foolishness. But the Bible says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Tell your neighbor, whatever he tells you to do, do it. We want to pray and say, Lord, help us to do. In as much as you have helped us to hear, now help us to do. Help us to apply the word in the mighty name of Jesus. Just lift up your hand and say, oh God, as I pray in the Holy Ghost, clapping my hands. Help me to do whatever I am told. The ability to do, the ability to have works on top of faith. Help me, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth, begin to pray. Blessed are you when you do. Blessed are those that does the word. Arikotomba, alibra katua, aresomona. Whatever he tells you to do, just do it. Akebadaya, Lord, give me that grace. Alekomba, that ability. Whatever I am told, arikotolona. So long as it is spirit, so long as it is life, help me to do it. Asebalanda, alikotoba, arebadame. Irakotolia, arebadua, esamela dua, arebatande, arosa duata, ikabadombe, ilatomonda dia, italadia tayanda. If you are the widow at Zerapath, you might be told to go in debt in order to come out of debt. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Asembaliata. If you are like Lazarus, you are dead. Your sisters might be told, akebadamanda. 
to roll the stone. But whatever he tells you to do, help me to do. Help me to do. Asembande, alikotolondada, irakotolondada, irakombaladia, isadabaya dabaya, embaladoboyata. And so the question was asked, alikotolondada diata, your sisters are here looking for you. And he said, who is my sister? Who is my mother? But those that hear the word and does the word, alikotomonda, alibrokotobosadia, asemenda dia, the following verse, akebada duata, eladobosadia dua, arekotolonda, arekotolonda, vanonswa soko nekurita, I will hear the word and do the word. Come on, begin to pray like that. I will hear the word, 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 and do the word. Esabela dombalada, in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says, and he stretched out his hand toward his disciples. And he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will, does the will, not hear the will, does the will of my father in heaven. He is my brother and he is my sister. So in obedience, you share the same bloodline with Jesus. In obedience. We want to pray and say, oh God. Help us, Lord, to follow your word. Whatever you tell me to do, help me to do it, oh God. Sometimes you tell me to wake up in the midnight hour. You tell me to give my tithe. You tell me to come for prayer shift. Whatever you tell me to do, help me to do it. The Bible says whoever does the will, not whoever hears the will, or whoever desires the will, which means we need to go beyond desire. We need to go beyond hearing. We need to come to a place of seeing manifestations. When you do the will of God, when you do the will of God, we want to pray one more time and say, Lord, help me, O oh God, to do your will, to follow you, O oh God. Help me, O oh God, instruction by instruction. The Bible says, follow me as I follow. Following takes taking steps. You don't see him walking and you admire him walking. No, you begin to follow step by step. If he fast, you fast with him. If he gives, you give with him. If he prays, you pray along with him. If he says, lift up your hands, you lift up your hands with him. That is following. Whoever does the will, he is my brother and my mother. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a lineage that comes not by birth, but it comes by obedience. By obedience, we become a family. By obedience, we prevail as a people. Somebody say the will of God. Somebody say obey God to become one with God. The Bible says abide in me and I in you. How do you abide in him. You abide in him by doing what he wills. Lord, help me obey so that I become one with you. Help me obey so that I become like you. Lift up your hands and say, oh Lord, by the grace upon KPM, I pray, Lord, help me obey your voice. I desire your will. I know your will, but help me to do your will. Open your mouth, begin to pray. Moseba, Ali, Katuada, Irakotolunda, Edebosa da Bande, Ali Kotola. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Lord, help me to abide in you. Help me to follow, O God. Asemandiada, Irakotolunda, Irakotoloda, Asebadaya. There is a voice behind what I am doing. There is a voice behind what I am giving. There is a voice. Help me, oh God, to hear that voice clearly and to do it. I said, but man, I have been knowing your will. I have been desiring your will. But this morning, take me further, oh God, to a place where I do your will. I desire, oh God, to do your will, to do your will. Help me, oh God, help me to do 
your will. Whatever I am instructed, a to Lord, a sebodom balad, irakoto londa dia, iradobosa diata. The Bible says they ask the question, what do we need to do in order to be saved? Aleko sadabaya, what shall we do? What shall we do? Alebra katua, that we may be saved. Lord, help us to do. Arika to monda de erodobosa dia. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Acts chapter number 16 verse 30. The Bible says, and he brought them out and said, says, what must I do to be saved? Which means even though salvation is available, but it is enforced when you do. When you do. We want to pray. Our salvation is in instruction. Our salvation is in instruction. Even when it comes to the salvation of your spirit, when you are a sinner, somebody has to instruct you. Lift up your hands. Say after me, Lord Jesus. And you say, Lord Jesus, enter into my heart. Enter into my heart. What are you doing? You are being instructed your way into salvation. Which means even salvation of the spirit, for you to enter heaven, you need to do something. You don't just get saved. You don't just go into heaven simply because Jesus died for you. You enter heaven when you receive instruction, obey. And as you obey, you are put into the house of the Lord. You become one with Christ. Somebody say, what must I do? So your spirit has been saved because you accepted Jesus. But your finances must be saved. Your marriage must be saved. But there is a doing that must come with every salvation. We want to pray. Lord, what must I do for my marriage to be saved? You read the Bible, it says that whatever is born, whatever, it doesn't say whoever only, but it says whatever is born, somebody say whatever. Whatever means anyone or anything, which means anything can be born of God. For whatever is born of God, whatever means my car can be born of God and it does not know accidents. It means my marriage can be born of God. And my marriage does not know divorce. The Bible says whatever, whatever means anyone or anything. Which means my business can be saved. But the question is what do I need to do for my business to be saved? We want to pray. You are going to cry before God and say, Lord, help me. So that I may be a person who receives instruction. Every time you disdain instructions, you are pushing your way. You are pushing yourself away from salvation. Every time you disobey instruction, you are pushing yourself away from salvation. Kune salvation yemoyo, but there is the salvation of your marriage. There is the salvation of your money. There is the salvation of your business. That salvation needs a certain doing. What do I need to do for my marriage to be saved? Can we pray? Just lift up your hand and say, oh God, I realize my business, my marriage is not yet born of God. But this morning, as I connect with the men and women of God, help me, Lord, to do so that my marriage, so that my business might be saved. I realize my spirit is saved, but my marriage is still behaving like an unbeliever. My business is still behaving like an unbeliever. But as I pray in the Holy Ghost, show me, Lord, through your servants, through your word, what I need to do for my business to be saved. Come on, open your mouth, begin to inquire of the Lord, begin to ask Him, begin to plead. Why should my business behave like an unbeliever? Lord. Lord, help me. Whatever I need to do, if I need to give, help me. If I need to pray, help me. What do I need to do for me to be saved? 
for my marriage to be saved, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. My business is not overcoming. My marriage is not overcoming. But this morning as I pray, this morning as I connect, Lord help me. Say what do I need to do for my marriage to be saved? What do I need to do for my business to be saved? Show me Lord. For whatever is born of God. Show me the way. Show me the truth. Show me the life. In every session, show me what I need to do. Show me, Lord, what I need to do. How should I pray? What should I give? Lord, show me. Arebadomba, ebalodo boy, alikotolunda, arikotoluata, esemanda dia. Your word says it. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Alikotolunda, there is the good of the land, and there is a land that is good. But help me, O oh God. Asembade, alikotolua, aribadomba, arikasuatia. In the name of Jesus. There is a scripture mom showed us on Sunday. The Bible says that if you are willing and obedient, the Bible says you shall eat the good of the land. You don't eat the good of the land because you are willing. You don't handle the good of the land because you are willing. Because everyone is willing enough to rise. But not everyone is obedient enough to rise. We want to pray. We want to pray and say, Lord, help us. For even salvation is a cost. Jesus was willing to die for the world. But at some point, he wanted to, to sort of like disobey. He said, Father, this thing is too much for me. He was willing, that's why he came to the world. But when the time came, he almost was about to give up because of the cost. The cost of obedience. Sometimes it will be painful. Sometimes it, it will cost you everything that you have. Sometimes it will cost you all the time that you have. Sometimes it will cost you all the resources that you have. But Jesus was willing to even obey even unto death for salvation to come. We want to pray and say, Lord, I am willing enough, but help me to be obedient enough to rise. What does it take for one to become a millionaire? What does it take for one to become a great man, a great woman? What does it take for one to become a proper son in the house of God? What is that price? Lord, help me to pay the price so that I may rise. I cannot have such an anointing around me, an anointing that is so high, and yet my life life is so low. I cannot have such great people as my father and mother, and yet I am a small man. What does it take? I am willing, but what does it take, oh Lord, for me to rise? Help me to be obedient. The Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Every land has something that is good about it. We want to pray and say, Lord, the good of the land, the good of the marriage, the good of the business, the good I've been seeing the bad side of marriage, the bad side of business, the bad side of life, but for every head there is a teller. Lord, help me, oh God. Help me to go to the other side. Help me to go to the other side. I want to cross over, like what Jesus said. He said, let us cross over, but the disciples, the Bible says they were willing to receive him into the boat and cross over. Lord, help me to to be obedient. Behind my miracle, there is a condition called obedience. Behind my greatness, there is a price called obedience. But as I pray this morning in the Holy Ghost, help me to be obedient enough. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat. I want to be an eater. I want to be an eater. The Bible says you shall see it, but you shall not eat it. That will be minus me. I 
will see it and I will drive it. I will see it and I will weigh it. I will see it and I will eat it. Why? Because I am obedient enough. Lord, help me. Just lift up your hand and say, oh God, by the grace upon this altar, by the grace upon my father and my mother in the Lord, help me, oh God, to be obedient. Help me, oh God, to obey my way into my next level, to obey my way into my next breakthrough as I pray in the Holy Ghost, clapping my hands. Put that spirit of obedience in me. Come on, open your mouth, begin to pray. Psalms 51, Moseba, creating me. Alibotomba, Erakotomba, Eradoboya, Ekembaliata, Irakotolonda, Adebosa, Erakotolonda, Erokotomonda, Irakotolonda, Eratomo, Asebede, Irakotolonda, Irasadia, Ebalato, help me God to be obedient, Irakotolonda, Irakotoloda, Isadiata, Irakotomonda, the right spirit in me. There has to be the right spirit. The spirit of obedience. As I walk, oh God, under this grace, help me to obey. John 4 verse 19. Come on, pray for the spirit of obedience. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, for you to obey, it means there has to be an instruction. Hallelujah. And also, it means there has to be an instructor. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the woman said to him, say, I perceive that you are a prophet. I perceive that you are a prophet. This is where her life changed. When she perceived that he was a prophet. The Bible says, a prophet passed through. The Bible says that, and the Shunammite woman perceived that he was a prophet. And the Bible says, and he said, the Bible says that, and he said to the husband, I perceive that this man is a prophet. I perceive that this man is a prophet. Let us create a place for him. Let us accommodate him. Somebody say, accommodate the prophet. We want to pray. Lord, help me to accommodate the prophet. Help me to accommodate the prophet. What is accommodating the prophet? It is allowing the man or the woman of God to have a place, to have a say to what goes on in your life. The prophet of God had an instruction that would pull the widow of Zerapath out of poverty. But the woman, at first, she was not willing to accommodate. Could it be that the, your way out is there, but you are not accommodating? You are not giving enough space for the man of God to speak. 